In 2013, we were introduced to a masterfully crafted and compelling video game by Naughty Dog titled The Last of Us. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where a real-life fungus called the Cordyceps mutated to infect human beings, the story follows Joel Miller, a hardened and pessimistic man 20 years after his daughter is murdered, and Ellie, a rash, impulsive, but resourceful young girl who is the only known person in the world to be immune to the virus that wiped out 90% of the population. Joel begrudgingly takes on the mission of smuggling her to a research facility where a cure could hopefully be developed, but the journey there is arduous, filled with danger along every turn. So much so that Joel and Ellie become inseparable, and while still carrying the burden of his own daughter's death with him, Joel makes a choice that can forever impact the fate of the world. Now, many can be forgiven for having a slight bit of skepticism when HBO Max announced that they were going to be bringing the much beloved game to the big screen or small screen or however you want to call it with The Last of Us TV show. Now, given the way modern media has grown into the habit of bastardizing beloved IPs, one could be forgiven for approaching this project with a considerable amount of skepticism. My main concern is this IP and this group of creators respecting the source material because the video game has garnered its own fan base and it's well within the millions of people who would be really upset and really disappointed if the live action TV show disrespects and does a disservice to the characters that they hold so near and dear. So we open up with this interview room in the year 1969 where a bunch of scientists are with a talk show host and they're essentially talking about the 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 possibility of you know a viral infection wiping out the it's it feels wholly unnecessary because it mentions nothing new uh yeah you could say it sets up the world and everything but it really isn't necessary once i get into the bit that really calls out to me what calls out to me is the part when the scientist starts to say a cordyceps can't infect a human being because the fungus can't survive in temperatures above 94 degrees uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit or whatever. And then he starts going on about, but maybe in the future where the planet is considerably warmer, the fungus can adapt to survive in higher climates and in more heated areas and more heated ecosystems and with an obvious call out to global warming so <laughs> this is all wrong yet you all come to us young people for hope how dare you so 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 what are you trying to tell me that global warming caused the the end of the world see this is where i stopped uh taking the whole beginning part seriously because it's now taking a political stance on something that should should have been kept like relatively apolitical how dare you now i just have to say that the opening credits the title sequence with the music from the game and everything it's actually pretty spot on it's actually really really epic uh you know nice animation like the graphics and everything uh, it's actually pretty nice. I, I will actually give them this one. So we fast forward to 2003, where we meet Sarah, who is Joel's daughter. And right off the bat, I can tell that something is very, very off with the way Joel and Sarah are characterized. Now, they're in the kitchen. They're cooking breakfast, right? And apparently, Joel can't cook for shit. Um... It's Sarah pretty much doing everything around the house, uh, waking Joel up. Uh, she wakes up first. Joel's asleep. She's the one cooking breakfast. So it's basically setting up Sarah being the one taking care of Joel, like not the other way around as, you know, a father should take care of his daughter. It's actually the daughter taking care of the dad, which uh, already is already like, see, whether or not you feel like I'm overanalyzing this, it kind of needs to be called out because modern society likes to attribute a certain degree of independence to people under the age of 18 
where they can do whatever they want, uh, you know, fend for themselves. There's no need for parents. Uh, it's that kind of narrative that is very prevalent in modern media and modern movies and modern forms of storytelling right like there are tons of jokes just made at joel's expense like joel's wearing diapers joel not being able to cook and then we are introduced to gabriel luna as tommy who comes in and we have them talking about geography talking about like some country or something and they're like like joel's the dumbass and then uh, Sarah is basically the one who's uh, knowledgeable in geography and shit like that. And uh, one could say that it's because she's in school and she's probably exposed to that sort of knowledge on a daily basis. But I could understand why that could be interpreted as a dig at Joel because it's just going more to show or it's just poking fun at Joel's apparent ineptitude because right off the bat already Joel has been characterized as someone who can't do anything for himself uh you know his daughter is cooking he's being woken up by his daughter and it's just not the Joel we see at the very beginning of the game you know it's not the Joel now I along with many others uh I'm not particularly very fond of the casting choice of Pedro Pascal as Joel because it's it's basically no secret that he was cast as Joel because the showrunners had a very different interpretation of what Joel should be because they believed that he could bring out a more gentle side of Joel or like a, a more, you know, diminished version of Joel, you know, not with not the same amount of authority and not the same amount of agency that the video game incarnation of Joel had and what is essentially what drew audiences to like Joel. Pedro Pascal on his own is already a very mixed bag with me because in certain roles I find him fairly phenomenal in in some of some projects while in other projects I find him like insufferable. Uh, but he's has an actor, right? He's a well-known actor. He's a big name, and attaching him to the role of Joel, you know, while to some it may be like, oh, what a casting choice. Uh, there are some, including me, who are still very dubious about this casting choice, and this episode did him no favors in terms of convincing me that this is Joel from the video games that we so love and hold dear to our hearts. Now, people may say that we only wound up knowing Sarah for a grand total of five minutes in the actual video game, but if the show is going to add something to the character, maybe it isn't the best idea to have her steal from her own father in order to buy him a present, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but it's just, if you're going to add something to an existing IP, don't make it to its detriment because it only serves to harm and further detach your audience from these already established characters that we're supposed to know, but it doesn't help if on the screen we're seeing total, total strangers. Uh, this little sequence of her in the background and then very blurry, like the old lady in the background is blurred. This is her neighbor's house. She's over with her neighbors to bake some cookies, right? And then the very paralyzed and, you know, very... Uh, inept grandma is in the background and out of nowhere she just starts spazzing out behind us and she's unaware and this was actually pretty good in my opinion because it like i found myself like holy shit just turn around turn the fuck around you know like we all know how the story goes right everyone people who are watching it are supposedly fans of the original video game so we all know that you know Within the first five minutes, there's going to be, like, a zombie apocalypse established. Now, remember how I said earlier how Sarah basically stole from Joel? Uh, it was basically to scrounge up enough money to fix Joel's broken wristwatch and give it to him as a present. Uh, which I find a little bit odd and a bit stupid because, again, it's just... It, it, it's all... You know, it can be perceived as it's all just being 
made to show Joel's like apparent ineptitude at even she says herself that oh I I stole from you and I used your money to fix your own watch because you wouldn't have done it yourself you know like you wouldn't have got up and used your money and fixed your your own broken watch yourself like it speaks to Joel's apparent ineptitude and his inability to do anything for himself and which is right off the bat it's just so unlike the Joel from the video games like this is not Joel like this is not who Joel is like this version of Joel is not who he is it, it's not he, Joel isn't someone who has no agency Joel isn't someone who who is literally poked fun of at every single chance that is afforded to others joel is not the type of guy to you know sit around and let his daughter just steal from him no like he like if this was the video game joel joel would have given sarah a stern talking to i'd imagine you know but th this right off the bat like any faithful player of the original game can tell that this very clearly is like right from right off the bat you could tell that something was off with joel but now it's even it's solidifying even more that this just is not the joel pedro pascal is not interpreting the joel that we as players of the original game have come to know and love now the next 13 minutes are just of the entire episode these next 13 minutes are the best parts of the entire episode which is kind of sad in essence this is just basically the night the world world joel's world pretty much fell apart uh you have uh sarah very like the cinematography and you know the way the shots are are constructed um it helps build tension really really well it still f kept me on edge uh, and that's a credit to the filmmakers. Uh, the, the dog just like, like <laughs> it's, I, 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 it called out to me because, uh, you know, dogs are obviously like an important, you know, part of say like zombie, and, like any zombie franchise, dogs are usually the ones who are able to like sniff out or like are afraid or like they're able to like sound the alarm. And we have that here with like, Sarah trying to take the dog back over to the neighbor's house and then the dog just like whining like crazy like it doesn't want to go back because <laughs> the dog knows what the fuck happened in there. This old lady got infected by the virus and is now able to walk and is sentient and is currently devouring her own daughter. And <laughs> the, the effects for the zombies right off the bat, uh, was very very bone chilling yeah yeah you have this the old lady just yeah look at that that's just fucking creepy you know and it's it, it helps establish the world that is now crumbling around them and what happens next it's just like it's like beat for beat what happens in the game right it's just basically the like the pov shots like this you know like the cam, the steady cams, and like the POV shots from uh, Sarah's perspective, taken right out of the video game, and that's what I like. Uh, there's even a part where Joel and Tommy they pass by a family, and like, oh, they have children. It's like, so do we. Like, keep going. Joel's like, keep going, and Sarah has to see all that. It's like, <laughs> like my dad just freaking left a, a, a like a family. We didn't, we didn't help anyone. Like, but that's directly from the game it happened in the game it was like one of the like if i had to recall a moment and i was the like one of the moments right it's like just just keep going you know we can't help them pace for pace beat for beat right out of the book we see airplane taken off like one right after the other they're all coming you know they're all leaving the 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 area uh like the streets in chaos the zombies running around and uh you know the plane crash right here oh that is an excellent shot right there uh the plane crash which well, from here it looks like an atomic bomb but when the plane crashes uh that's taken straight out of the game and then from there everything just goes downhill uh we all know what happens next the zombies here are like freaking 
They remind me a lot of World War Z zombies, like the runners and shit. Well, they're called the runners, right? In lore, they're called the runners. And, you know, the way they're they're not these slow walking dead zombies, like they will run at you. So there's that you have to deal with. And Joel's carrying a load around. He's slowing him down. Uh, we see here that basically if it weren't for the soldier that gunned down the zombie, they would have like basically caught up to them. And Joel pretty much would have died, right? But uh, we all know what happens next if you play the game. Uh, Joel gets shot and Sarah gets shot as well. Um, and she winds up dying. Uh, very, very sad. And it's, again, taken straight out of... I have no complaints, honestly. You know, I'm not hating just to hate. Uh, but, yeah, I have no complaints about this segment whatsoever because, again, it is taken right from the video game. It is taken right from the source material. And I personally have no gripes with it. Uh, I think it's... a pretty fair and honest representation of the video game so credit where credit is due now we are reintroduced to joel he's graying at the head he's he looks like a badass he's surprisingly the only like one of the few who are still alive uh 20 years since the world pretty much went to hell there is a truck uh arriving at where joel is and they are burning bodies they're using bodies as fuel for a campfire and one of the bodies turns out to be this child. This woman approaches the truck and says, I, I, I can't do this. I, I can't uh, I can't burn a child. And then Joel just walks up and then he just takes the child and just dumps it into the fire. Um, you know, one could read that a million different ways, but uh, one could be forgiven for reading that as, again, another jab at Joel and him basically being a man because you know uh, the woman couldn't do it because she's such a good woman like i can't i can't bring myself to burn but since joel is such a heartless cruel man uh you know big bad man uh he he burns a child basically he throws a child you know who, who's already dead mind you into the the fire to be burned Right. So again, one can one can be forgiven for interpreting this as yet another dig at Joel on the sole basis of him being a man, pretty much. So basically, we're introduced to life at this quarantine zone in Boston. Uh, there are people taking jobs, very meager jobs, very disgusting jobs for ration cards. That's the currency. Uh, that's the new currency in today's world, ration cards, where the more jobs you take, uh, basically like almost like food stamps uh, it's a the form of currency right you trade them in for supplies or uh, whatever it may be that you need and you know we're we're, we're introduced to life uh, in basically the quarantine zone of Boston uh, you see the sniper right here now here we meet Robert and Tess and uh, I can already tell you right off the bat that Robert's role in the first few minutes is already diminished. We didn't get to see him much for the opening few like min minutes of the playthrough, but still, his role is diminished pretty much because he, he winds up getting killed later on. And they're talking about the deal that went wrong. Uh, Robert owes Tess batteries and, you know, he's being called out for being basically a, a, a scammer and uh, ripping people off uh, and that is when they are attacked by the fireflies which as we know from the video game there are a freedom fighter-esque terrorist group now here we are finally introduced to um, Bella Ramsey I think her her name is Bella Ramsey playing Ellie I, I seriously like if i thought joel was miscast then i sincerely think that this uh young actress was severely miscast for ellie because if reports are to be believed that she herself is claiming that she was told not to play the game and not to look at the source material uh it is a very superficial performance because Ellie is known for having a, a potty mouth and being all fuck, like fuckity fuck fuck fuck, or, you know, basically cursing at every turn. But 
like she does this like it feels that that's all she was told about the character she's portraying so it the cursing is turned up to a very obnoxious level basically this actress bella ramsey i've only known her i've only seen her in one other project and even in that other project she had a very very minimal role in it and that's game of thrones where she played leanna mormon uh and her role wasn't that big now this entire sequence can could, could just be eliminated right this is another one of those sequences where you take it away and nothing changes uh, it's just joel coming in sitting down with this guy with a microphone and uh just having conversation where you could just delete this delete this entire scene and you're you're solid i mean nothing else changes this scene adds nothing new he's it's basically re-explaining something that was explained earlier in the episode why joel's trying to get a car battery we all know joel's trying to get a car battery to go and check on tommy who hasn't who's his brother and he hasn't checked in for three weeks which is odd um and tommy is gone missing and we all know this uh this scene really doesn't need to be here uh it's just it's it's literally an exposition dump and you could cut this scene and there will be no difference it will not be impacted the overall episode will not be impacted one way or the other i guarantee you but yeah nothing uh, the episode just carries on joel is apparently on drugs now uh he's an alcoholic uh I mean, I don't know. There again, there's just little bits and pieces that just demean Joel as a character. Uh, yeah, it's very odd, and you know, he just passes out, and it's just so odd, you know. Now Tess comes in, and like in the game, basically we all know they both decide to go after Robert, and uh, to basically take back what he ripped them off for the car batteries now here we are reintroduced to marlene and if we know marlene from the video game is basically the leader of the fireflies and which is interesting because uh they brought back the same actress who voiced marlene in the original game to play her in live action which can either be good or bad because voicing a character uh well you could correct me if i'm wrong uh I don't think voicing a character, I don't think um, it's too far-fetched to say that voicing a character is not the same as playing them in front of a camera. There's different nuances to everything. So if this actress can bring back the Marlene we saw in the original game, you know, the Marlene was a horrible character, like horrible as in her intentions were, were cruel and, you know, not like not good. And she was not a good person. But if she can bring that, if this actress can bring that back and embody that in live action in front of the camera, then kudos. Uh, but since this is the, only the first episode, I mean, it could get better, or it could get worse. Uh, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But a very interesting choice to bring back the original actress who voiced Marlene to play her in live action. Uh, we'll just watch the space next we arrive at basically like what kicks things off what sets the whole thing in motion joel and tess meet up with marlene or basically run into marlene because it turns out that robert the person that they were after ripped marlene off as well so uh they are now tasked with smuggling ellie out of the city perimeter and Right now, they aren't aware as to who Ellie is and what makes her so special. Now, here we come to what I have to say is my biggest gripe with this episode. Uh, they basically discover who Ellie is and what makes her so special. Uh, they discover that she's immune to the virus. Like, the execution of this moment, it just doesn't add up with me. So, basically... Uh, they're using like that special device right to they like put it to your neck and they can tell whether you're infected or not right just to check it's like a it's like a formality at this point and then when they buzz ellie she stabs the guy and then the guy gets pissed off and raises his gun and joel is like you know put the gun down put the gun down and then he gets flashbacks to 
what happened with uh with him and his daughter I mean, it, it triggers a flashback which then causes him to lash out and pummel this guy to death which i mean look at her expression i mean my expression was what the fuck that came out of nowhere me personally that came out of fucking nowhere to me like the reaction made no sense uh the motivation for this moment absolutely made no sense as well it makes no sense because yeah you have like superficially people could say that it's a good use of the flashback because you have joel being basically like at gunpoint like protecting like ellie and it could a call back to his daughter but it makes no sense here because joel and ellie don't have a connection yet like as far as you know you could have fooled me like as far as this episode is concerned joel and ellie do not have a connection established they as far as i know they hate each other right now there is no they've spent no time together like they've had no deep meaningful conversation together they have they've had no they've undergone no amount of bonding uh inclusively right after this like when they find out what she really is and you know her being immune and such uh joel is angry because he's basically he was lied to so now he's carrying a cargo that is infected and he doesn't know what's going on he doesn't know if this strange girl is going to just ma randomly turn into a zombie uh and he and he's dubious he's skeptical in the game right he's skeptical about it and he's angry and so there is no connection there like this use of the flashback was a complete misuse of a flashback uh it probably would this flashback put it probably would have been better better off being utilized like towards the end or somewhere in the end where you could have a similar moment where like a joel is being you know down the barrel of a gun and uh he's protecting ellie and then you boom flashback to this moment it would work perfectly but here it makes absolutely no sense emotionally and from a narrative perspective it makes no sense because they have not connected there are there is no relationship established between joel and ellie yet and then the reaction from joel is just again out of nowhere for me like it like the character that <laughs> has been built up throughout the entire runtime of the episode just does a complete 180 and he just becomes like a freaking killer and just starts pummeling this guy to death and it was so out of left field for me and i was like <laughs> like it, it took me aback like i had like what where did this come from like i it's not like me being shocked like holy shit he did that it's more of me being shocked as where did this come from where was this guy like where what happened to the guy who basically was being joked at the entire time what happened to the guy who was basically being the butt of every joke throughout the beginning part of this episode what happened to that guy who is this like ruthless assassin now you know and i get that that's joel from the video game but then still the transition like if we're asking if we as an audience are asking where the hell did this reaction come from you know that your your character progression and your pacing and your 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 your, your continuity is n not right. There's no other way to say it. It's just not right. Where the hell did this reaction come from? Where? Like where? Like where did this violence come from? Where did this, you know, like poop face Pedro Pascal come from? Seriously where did this come from now my final thoughts uh the only final thought that i personally have is how i managed to make it through the entire episode uh again like being i'm not reviewing it just to hate you know i see people on the internet like trashing the show um but i'm not you know there, there's things i liked about it there's things that have obviously stayed true to what the video game was and uh staying true to the source material but then there's other things that are just glaringly apparent um 
that are not being like they're not being respected and they're not being treated with the amount of respect that an IP such as The Last of Us deserves. So yeah, aside from the very obvious things that weren't respected with the episode, uh, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, uh, yet it wasn't the most uh, overwhelming or groundbreaking thing in the world. It was neither good or bad in my opinion because there were definitely some things I enjoyed in the episode but if i had to give it a score one through ten i'd probably give this episode a solid five because because uh there, again there were some things that i truly enjoyed which i thought were respectful to the source material but then there were other things like the characterization of joel and the characterization of ellie and it this first episode is not doing these characters any favors because as the episode progressed i personally found myself questioning whether or not these are the exact same characters that i met like way back in 2013 uh in the video game and it's not i find myself repeatedly saying this is not joel this is not ellie but Again, this is only the first episode. I could be proven wrong. Um, I And again, I hope I'm proven wrong because I personally would like nothing more than to see a television adaptation of The Last of Us be successful. You know, like there is no project of an existing IP that I would love to see fail. It's through its own choices and narrative choices of disrespecting already currently existing IP and set rules that leads to its own detriment and leads to people ridiculing and over criticizing it on the internet and it's no one's fault but the showrunners that they've made their bed they've chosen to ignore certain elements which made audiences fall in love with the original IP and they've chosen to ignore those things and are now paying the price for it with people calling them out. So again, that was the first episode of The Last of Us. I'll be reviewing it as it goes on. Uh, I think there's going to be nine episodes, so there's eight more episodes after this. Uh, like I said, not overly impressed. There were things I liked, but in all honesty, um, I'm not too excited about where this might go. So, again, um, not too blown away. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it honestly does not have me hyped up for what's to come next. Uh, and honestly, it just has me more or less feeling like playing the video game again. Uh, but, hey, until next week, uh, we'll see what happens. And, uh, yeah, peace.